Okay, today is module one, lesson 27, solving percent problems. Today's lesson is just more practice on everything that we have been doing. It's nothing new. Today we're really going to focus on setting up how to solve these percent problems. We're, you're still welcome to use the double number lines. I know a lot of you still like to use those. We're going to really focus on how to set up the equivalent ratios. So when we see the equivalent ratios, they're both set equal to each other. We're going to figure out what goes in each part. That's our goal, our main focus for today, okay? So let's take a look at example one. We have three problems here that you have to solve. But in one of them, we're trying to find the part. In one of them, we're trying to find the whole. And in one of them, we're trying to find the percent. I'm going to come back to this slide for a second. If I had to label this, and you can write this on the top of your note page in that blank space, I don't have it here. A little bit, so I'll put it here. If I had to label those four spaces in my ratios with words, what would I have to put here? What goes there? Okay, um, well where would our part go? Our part is always our numerator. What else? What word do I have to put? Right, the whole is always the denominator, because it's part of the whole. That's what a fraction means. What goes up here in my other numerator? Always, always, always. The percent. the percent. And what always, always, always goes in my other numerator? What is the whole for my percent? This time you can give me a number. Percent means out of 100. If you wrote these the other way, that's okay too. They're equal, so they're commutative. Doesn't matter which way you write them. This is going to help us get organized when we're setting up these three problems to solve it. All right. I'm going to give you a little hint. I know I discussed this with some of you last week. Here's a little hint. We don't see in here 60% of 300 equals what? I don't see the word part. I don't see the word whole. What words do I see here? What words do we see? I see the word of. When I see the word of, is that going to be, whoops, is that going to be my part or my whole? Of. Does that equal my part or my whole? What does that represent? That's our whole. So if I see the word of, that's going to say, ooh, that's probably my of. Now, if I said, here, we said equal sign. Does anybody know a word that also means equal? Like, if I said 2 plus 3 is 5, 4 times 2 is 8. So what's another word for equal that we probably heard since we were kindergarten? You first learned 2 plus 2 is 4. Right, so when we see the word is, that's going to indicate that that's your part. For example, Matt is part of this class. Okay? Frankie is part of this class. Turkey is part of your Thanksgiving dinner. Dessert is the best part of the day. So is is your part, of is your whole. 
So another way we could set this up is is over of equals percent over 100. So if you want to write this on the bottom half of your page under this question, we're going to go, we're doing this a little backwards. So you can write that nice and huge across the bottom of page 121. Okay, so now that we have a little verbal cue word to help us break down the problem, because these are nice and short. We have a whole story and a song and a dance and an entire football team and the marching band. You know, these big word problems are pretty straightforward. So let's see what pieces of information we have. What the first thing that I know, no matter what, is going to be in every single percent problem that I saw. What's going to be in every single one? Um, I may not always know the whole, but which whole? The, not the, not the percent, the, um, the percent is always out of 100. So I can always start by writing that down. I do fraction bars, my equal sign, and my 100. Now I can start plugging in, playing the matching game, okay? So let's imagine that's my is, that's my is, I said. Seriously? I'm trying to be all fancy here. That's my is, that's my of, that's my percent. So here in my question, I see 60%. So I replace the percent with 60. Then I have of 300. So 300 is my whole. So 300. Then I have my equal sign and the blank. Remember when we see the equal sign, we can replace it with the word is. Do I know the is? No. So that's what I'm looking for. So how much of 300 is equal to 60% over, uh, over 100? So now we can go ahead and solve that. How many of you think it would be easier if I switched up? We can do that. I think it's easier. So we have 60% out of 100 equals how much out of 300? I think we're used to working left to right, left to right. So we could flip flop those. What process do I use to get from 100 to 300? What can I do mathematically to get me from 100 to 300? Sure. Times 3 times 3. So 60 times 3 is 180. So what did we find there? Our part, our whole, or our percent? Our part. So that's the word you're supposed to write on the line. Try the next two on your own. So let's go over how we were going to set these up. I drew my two sets of ratios. I know that I'm always going to have 100 in the denominator. I put it on the right. Could we put it on the left? Yes, yeah. yeah. so as long as the 100 is in the denominator. Let's go back and circle the pieces that we need. I see 60%. I see of something. And I see equals 300. So this is my percent. Of. What is my of? Is of my part or my whole? Last week we went off to the side and did percent, part, and whole. Instead of listing it to the side, I'm just going to list it right above the equation right now. It's just another strategy. Of is my whole. Remember that when we see the word equal sign, that is... So that's my part. So label your three circles. Label your three circles. 
Now it's that matching game again. You know what the pieces are. We have is over of percent over 100. So my percent is 60. My is is 300. And I don't know my of. Who has a question with why the 300 went on top this time? We saw that last week. Why? Because 60% of some big number is 30%. So 30 per, uh, 300. So 300 is my part. 60% equals 300. So if my 60% is the part, then 300 is my part. Okay? If you're more comfortable with the double number line, you can still do your double number line, but you might be asked to show two methods. So I want to keep practicing how to set this up. Do we want to reverse them? Or do you want to leave them? It doesn't matter. You can work right to left if you want to work right to left. 60 to what is 300 times 5? So 100 times 5 is 500. And this time we had to find the whole. So write whole on the line because that's what we were looking for. Oh, uh, they wanted, you could write it below the line if you wanted to. Okay, and finally, let's set up our two ratios over 100. <laughs> let's circle, gentlemen, the pieces that we need. Of 300 something percent. Look, we have our verbal keyword, 60 out of 300. We know that that's 60 out of 300. We know that we can write ratios as a fraction. 60 out of 300. Then we're trying to find the percent. So that's how you should have set up the last one. How can I get from 300 to 100? Yep. So 60 <laughs> divided by 3 is 20. So this time we had to find the percent. If you chose to scale down your 60 over 300 and then scale it back up, that's what we just scaled it down in one step here. Okay? Alright, let's take a look at exercise one. That time of year, Black Friday sale, Christmas shopping. My kids ordered their Christmas outfits last night, you know, ready for the holidays. Lots of sales now. So here's a chart that uh, Priya, she's doing her back to school shopping. I guess now that it's cold outside, not in here. Now it's cold, we need some new fall clothes. So let's calculate all of the missing values in the table below, rounding to the nearest penny. If we have time, we can calculate how much she'll spend on her outfit after all the discounts. But right now, let's just focus I'm finding the discount for each item. No Where's Waldo work. I want everything labeled. So, like, first we'll do our shirts in a nice column, and then our pants, and so on. So let's start with our shirts, and let's go all the way to the left below the table. Nice, neat, organized. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to write our little expression first to help us. <laughs> is over of equals percent over 100. Are we ready? 
Yep. Now, the original price, that's the whole price of the shirt. That's the total price of the item. So is the original price my is or my of? Of because it's also considered my whole. So that means the discount, is that my is or my of? Is because that's my part. So write that in the table too to remind you. The total price is your of, your whole. I like the words part and whole better because it represents what it means. Alright, so now let's plug in what we know. Write your two fraction bars, over 100. What's our percent? 25%. Now, the shirt is originally $44. We said that's our whole. So we have to find out how much they're going to take off of the $45. What part of the $45 do I not have to pay? All right. Can we get from 44 to 100 nice and evenly? No. What should I try to do? What can I do? All right, which do you want to scale down? We only have one choice. We can only scale down that one because I can't scale down something that I don't know. So 25 over 100 reduces to what? Sure. Now is it easier to find a relationship between the two? So what do I have to do? What do I have to do? Times times 11. So $11. What would the cost of this shirt be? Am I only paying $11 for the shirt? You're right. How did you get $33? Good. So the shirt was $44 minus the $11 discount. So if you want to write that under the table that the shirt costs $33, you kind of add another row underneath. All right, try setting up the pants on your own. All right, so let's see how we would set this up for the pants. We bring down our two ratios or fractions, whatever you want to call that, same thing. We know that our percent is 30% off. Now, $15, does that represent the part that they're taking off, or does $15 represent the total cost of the pants? The part. So 15 is my numerator, and I'm trying to find my denominator. This one's a little bit easier to see the relationship. So how do I get from 15 to 30? Yep. So times 2. What times 2 is 100? 50. If you wanted to go the other way and do division, okay, as long as you're showing me what you did. So $50 is the original price of the pants. How much is Priya paying for those pants? $15 is the part coming off the $50 total. Off of. Off of the $50 total. Right, we're paying $35. So you can write that underneath. Let's take a look at the shoes. You went ahead and started the shoes. So is over of percent over 100. Now on your homework tonight, 
You can use this method or the double number line. I'd like to see this one. And then you could check it with the double number line since if you feel you need more practice with this. Okay, so we know that our percent off is 15%. $9. Is that the part that they're taking off, or is that the whole price of the shoe? Part taken off. So again, I have to find the original cost of the shoe. Can I easily get from 15 to 9 or 9 to 15? So I have to scale down my 15 over 100. How can I scale down 15 over 100? What's an equivalent fraction? How did you get 3 over 20? Okay, good. So that gave us that. Now we can scale it back up. Times 3, times 3. So what is the total? $60. So what's the new price of the shoe? $51. Okay. But I'll go and take a look at it. So for your homework tonight, you can use both methods. You have two problems they have to solve on loose leaf. Don't forget there's extra help today and on Wednesday.